viewers welcome to my channel i am hasham ali khan this is the third video on unit number 1 the first video i have completed on the meaning of the term financial accounting objectives then nature of financial accounting advantages and disadvantages second video i have completed about the accounting concepts and accounting conventions accounting concepts are the basic conditions or assumptions on which the whole accounting is based every accountant must follow accounting concepts while maintaining accounting records accounting conventions are those customs and assumptions which are followed by accountant while preparing the financial statements so four conventions and eight accounting concepts i have explained you in the last video in this video i am going to explain you about the implications of accounting concepts and accounting conventions on the accounting system Secondly I am going to explain you about what is double entry accounting system and what are the advantages and disadvantages of double entry accounting system so these two topics I am going to cover up in this video so watch the video till the end if you have not watched the earlier video I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel select the subject accounting for management select the videos of unit number 1 introduction to financial accounting be perfect about the concept about the theory of financial accounting <clears throat> take the screenshot of the points which i have written on the board then i'll explain everything in detail now accounting concepts what are the implications of following the accounting concepts and accounting conventions on the accounting system This question will also be frequently asked in examination. Implication means effects. Why we follow accounting concepts? Why we follow accounting conventions? See here, eight accounting concepts are there. Each every uh, concept, what is the implication of accounting? I am going to explain. The first one is business entity concept. <clears throat> According to business entity concept, accounting will treat the owner and the business as two separate entities. if we follow this accounting concept what will happen the owner's personal transaction which will not be included in the business transaction so business transaction will be completely separated from the personal transaction of the owner in this way we can be able to evaluate the performance of the business otherwise all the transaction will be mixed up and we cannot be able to ascertain the financial performance or operating results that is the implication of following <coughs> business entity concept second one going concern concept the going concern concept says the business is going to continue for the foreseeable future there is neither the intention nor the necessity of the owner to stop the business from that point of view only assets are recorded at their cost and book value not at the market price the market price may change but the uh, assets will be recorded at their cost and book value carrying value next one is money measurement concept according to money measurement concept only monetary transactions will be recorded non monetary transactions even if they are important it will not be recorded so what is the effect of this uh, money measurement concept we can get objective result of operations otherwise subjectivity will creep in if we include <coughs> non monetary transactions next one is cost concept according to cost concept the assets are recorded at cost not at the market price the market price may come and down make uh, i mean decrease or increase may come down or go up so thus those transaction will affect the business transaction that's why we will not include the market price we include the cost next one is dual aspect concept according to dual aspect concept every transaction has two aspects something we are giving something we are getting both the aspects should be recorded if we record both the aspects then accounting will be complete we can be able to ascertain the operation operating result and also the financial position if we follow dual aspect concept next is accounting period concept accounting period concept means 
the life of the business is divided into parts. Each part consists of 12 months period. So at the end of every 12 months, all the accounts are closed and we have to make the summaries of all the accounts. We have to prepare the trial balance. We have to prepare the profit and loss account balance sheet after every end of 12 months. That is accounting period concept. Next is periodic matching concept. In order to ascertain the profit, we have to match the current cost with the current revenue. When we match revenue with cost, we can be able to get the profit. That is the implication of following periodic concept. Realization concept implies that revenue from goods or services provided should be recognized when the goods are delivered or services are provided. So only when goods are delivered or services are provided, then only revenue will be recorded. Otherwise, revenue should not be recognized. So these are the implications of accounting concepts. Now, what are the implications of accounting conventions? The conventions already I told you, these are the customs or traditions which every accountant will follow at the time of preparing the financial statements. So there are four accounting conventions I've explained in the last video. What is the implication <coughs> of following those accounting conventions? The first convention of conservatism. The accountant should be conservative. Conservative means playing safe. Don't record any expected gain, but provide for all expected losses. In this way, we can be able to get an objective profit, a correct profit. The profit will not be exaggerated. Otherwise, what will happen if we recognize the expected gain also, then what will happen? Profit will be more. So to make the conservative profit, we have to provide for all expected losses, but don't anticipate any expected gain. The convention of full disclosure implies that everything Every transaction, every event should be clearly disclosed in the financial statements. The financial statements should present a true and fair view of the activities of the business. That is the implication of following this full disclosure convention. Next, convention of consistency. According to con consistency convention, the accounting methods, accounting policies should be consistently followed from one year to another year. Frequently, accounting methods should not be changed. So what is the implication? <clears throat> if we follow the same accounting methods, we can be able to make the comparison. Comparison of uh, performance of one year with another year. We can be able to compare the performance of one year with another year or one organization with another organization. Then convention of materiality. By applying this convention of materiality, we can be able to disclose all material or significant items separately in the financial statements so that the user of financial statements can be able to take the decisions. So these are the implications of accounting concepts and accounting conventions on the accounting system. That's all. <coughs> now the second, <coughs> second part is double entry accounting system. This question is also frequently asked in examination, theory question. What do you mean by double entry accounting system? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Double entry accounting system is an accounting technique that records the twofold aspect of every transaction. Every transaction has dual aspect. One giving aspect, another taking aspect. Simple example, when a business sells goods, Goods are going out and cash is coming in. The so two aspects, something going out, something coming in. Similarly, when salaries are paid to the employees, the business is paying the salary and the business is getting the services of the employees. So every transaction has twofold effect. That's why one, uh, both the aspects should be recorded. That's why one account is debited, the other account is credited with equal amount. That is called double entry system. So it's a system, it's a technique in which both the aspects of a transaction are recorded. 
one account is debited the other account is credited with the same amount that is double entry system in other words is a system in which every transaction has twofold effect so the one account is debited and the other account is credited just now i told since every transaction will have one debit effect and one credit effect so it always leads to a set of balanced ledger debit and credit balances see here for every transaction we are debiting one account crediting another account so as many times we are debiting one account so many times we are crediting other account so in other words all the debits must be equal to all the credits debit total and credit total should tally if we follow double entry system that's all. this is the meaning of the term double entry accounting now what are the advantages there are many advantages of double entry system of accounting because by following this method we can check the arithmetical accuracy we can prepare the income statement profit and loss account we can prepare the statement of financial position or balance sheet all the financial statements can be systematically prepared if we follow double entry accounting system now one by one uh, i will explain you advantages the first it provides a complete record of all transaction at as it brings into record both the aspects this is a complete accounting system because every transaction has two aspects and both the aspects are recorded so we can say that it's a complete system of accounting that's the first advantage second it provides most of reliable information because every transaction we are recording every transaction we are not leaving any transaction and both the aspects were rec are recorded so it's a complete it's a perfect accounting system third it enables testing the accuracy of the books of accounts by preparing a trial balance at the end of the year we take all debit balances and credit balances from ledger accounts and if all the total of debit and total of credit are equal it means there is arithmetical accuracy arithmetically accurate all the books of accounts no errors if the total of debit and credit are equal that is the advantage we can check the arithmetical accuracy if we follow double entry system next one it prevents fraud and help in identifying irregularities very more very important advantage when we follow double entry accounting system the chances of fraud will come down very less chances are there that the person that the people will commit fraud similarly irregular irregularities can be checked we can be able to control the act activities of the business by following double entry system next advantage is it helps a trader to ascertain the financial position of the business by preparing a balance sheet every business will make a balance sheet at the end of the year balance sheet is also called statement of financial position so it will be easier to find out the financial position by making balance sheet when we follow double entry system if we don't follow double entry system we cannot be able to make the balance sheet we cannot be able to ascertain the financial position of the business next one is it helps in finding out profit or loss during an accounting period every business wants to find out whether my business has earned profit or incurred loss during a accounting period so easily accurately systematically we can ascertain the profit or loss during the accounting period by following double entry system next one it is a systematic method of maintaining the accounts one more very important advantage of double entry system is it's most scientific it is systematic maintaining the accounts accounts are completely accurate the accounting will show the true and fair view of the business financial activities the next one it facilitates in easy comparison of sales purchase stock etc with similar items of previous year to find out whether the business is progressing or not comparison is very much necessary for every business every business wants to compare the performance of current year with the last year or previous year if we make the comparison then only we can be able to know whether our business is progressing so we are having the total of purchases total of sales total of stock total of profit of every year so we can be able to make the comparison easily we can judge the profitability of the business these are few advantages of double entry system
Now, what are the disadvantage? Few disadvantage. Few disadvantages are there of double entry system. The first one, double entry system is a time consuming method and it makes record of both the aspect of the transaction. First, it is time consuming. More time is required, more technical knowledge is required. Everybody cannot maintain the accounts. He must have the knowledge of accounting, the techniques of accounting, which account to be debited, which account to be created, how to make the ledger, how to make the journal, how to make the trial balance. All this technical knowledge is required. Everybody will not have. So first disadvantage is uh, time consuming and requires perfect knowledge. Secondly, the balance of debit and credit balance, that is trial balance, does not reveal all the errors. Secondly, by following this double entry system, we make the trial balance before making financial statements. The trial balance, if it is tallied, it prima facie shows that there are no errors. But in reality, there may be some errors even if the trial balance is tallied. That means those errors which are not disclosed by the trial balance. So trial balance is agreed. All debit, all credit are equal. But still there is a possibility of some errors in the books of accounts. Like error of omission, error of commission, compensating error, error of principle, etc. So the limitation is we are not 100% sure that the accounts are correct even by following double entry system also. Next one is it is not understandable to non-accounting people as it is based on technical knowledge of accounting. The next thing is uh, a person who does not have the accounting knowledge, they cannot be able to understand the financial statements, accounting etc. Because he is non-accounting person. So this uh, double entry system is not equally understandable to everyone. Only those people who are having the knowledge of accounting, they can understand, otherwise not. So these are few disadvantages of double entry system. So come on, my students, I have explained you two topics in this video. That is, first of all, what is the implication of accounting concepts, accounting conventions on the accounting system? I have explained each and every item. Secondly, what is bookkeeping? What are the advantages and disadvantages of bookkeeping? Hope you understood my lecture. You understood my points. If you are unable to understand in the first attempt, watch the video twice, thrice. Definitely you will get a lot of confidence. Remember, passing the examination does not matter. You need knowledge. The market is very competitive. Only the fittest, only the perfect, knowledgeable, intelligent person will have the place in the market. That's why gain more and more knowledge by watching my videos. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video. Watch, I mean, subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed and uh, share my channel link among your friends, among your groups so that more students can watch the video. Give your comments and lastly, buy the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we'll continue the next topic in the next video.